in terms of creating Instagram content, I, d- I don't even have to think about it. Like you just asked me, what would you do for this? And I just I instantly was like, this is what I would do because that's, that's me. And that's the impact that I want to make like in our industry. So I feel like once people can really define that, everything else in their life just becomes so much easier because you're working towards that goal. Welcome to Stay Paid Real Estate Marketing. Unlock the secrets of success in the real estate world where each episode delivers valuable tips and strategies to elevate your marketing game and help you succeed in both life and business. Brought to you by Reminder Media. Welcome to Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike along with Luke Acri, and our guest today is Lindsay Joe with over 93 million in closed sales. Lindsay is a passionate advocate for female realtors committed to encouraging others to embrace their creativity and inject personality into their content. She hopes to continue to challenge outdated stereotypes and show that female realtors can be both professional and personable while empowering and elevating women in real estate. Lindsay, welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Lindsay, we're excited to have you on the show. You are crushing it on social. So everybody's got to go check out uh, your social media and then your content on BAM. Uh, So shout out to the broke agent and and Byron there. Uh, We had the chance to interview Eric and he was crushing it. So go check out definitely your content on BAM. But I would love to start out. You had posted on your Instagram about how you grew your email uh, following. Um, through, I think it was mini chat and some tactic you use there. And the reason why I want to start there is because I think email is one of the best advertising mediums because it's so cost effective, but the biggest issue with email is building your list and that's where people struggle. So they, they can go buy the MailChimp platform. They can use a reminder media like us, but they don't have the email list and you were successful in building an email list through your Instagram following. So could you walk us through that strategy? Yeah, totally. So I have like so many nightmares about just randomly waking up one day and my Instagram being deleted or hacked. And so Eric had told me over and over and over again, like you have to start really building your email list because we don't, we don't own our Instagram followers. We only own our email list and we, we don't own our Instagram data, but we own emails. So I kind of started thinking like, what can I give away for free in exchange for email addresses? And so I set it up through many chats. So I would give away essentially like little freebies. Like I would give away like my buyer guide or my seller guide, or sometimes I would do my BAM articles and ask for an email address in exchange for that, um, that actual freebie. I've done so many different ones. Um, but really I just, I'm thinking like at least once a week, what can I do? What can I promote on my Instagram story to grab those emails and get that data from Instagram and into, into my email marketing database. And what does mini chat do for you in that? Can you kind of explain how you use it? So ManyChat has a capture customer data for lead magnet flow. So literally you can set it up through ManyChat and then ManyChat will ask that person, that follower for their email address in exchange for that lead magnet or for that freebie. So you can see in the DMs, ManyChat will ask them for their email. And then once ManyChat gets that email, then that freebie will be delivered to them automatically. So it's a little bit different than like a landing page where you're taking that person away from the DMs and they're clicking on that landing page page and then filling out their information that way with the capture customer data with lead magnet flow they they know that you're they're not communicating with you but it, it feels like they almost are because many chat is is having that conversation with them in the dms so i find that it converts a little bit better than just an actual like landing page where you're taking them away from the dms Does yeah that make sense? no it makes perfect sense and i think keeping people in the dms i think i had heard on a panel i don't know if it was ed stulak or who it was but was talking about how it used to be they tried to get people off of social um after mm-hmm. you started the conversation like in the dm you would immediately move to like trying to get a phone call with them or you know off of social and communicating another way and then yeah. now there are people are going, no, 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 I try to keep it in the DM because that is one where people are always looking and two, where they felt comfortable to reach yeah. out. And so it's the higher, I think, rate of response, higher conversion. Does MiniChat then allow you to sync with your CRM or do you then export all those emails into your CRM? Yeah, so I use Zapier. I don't okay. know if you guys have heard of that tool before. 
Um, so I will set it up to where any of that data that is given to me in the DMs is just automatically added into my flow desk using Zapier. Okay. So Zapier is kind of like that invisible bridge okay. between your DMs and then your email list or your CRM or wherever you're wanting to move that information to. Where are you getting the freebies from? Like you mentioned a buyer's guide yeah. or these things that you're putting together, designing in Canva. Are you getting them from where, where do you yeah. get those from? It's just my, my own stuff, just my own buyer guide, my own seller guide. Um, some of the stuff I will do in Canva, like the, I have a, a lead magnet guide where people can do like the top 10 brunches in their area, like top 10 brunches in DC oh, that's and cool. offer for their followers. Um, and they could either put that in the link in their bio, or they could just offer it on their actual story, their Instagram story. But I mean, for the most part, I'm, I'm doing a lot in Canva and it's just my own personal stuff too. I was, I used to be like very afraid to give away my own stuff. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's like my secrets, you know, <laughs> but the reality is like 1% of people are really going to implement, which yeah. is sad. If that, but, yep. I mean, I think I had maybe 600, 700 people sign up to get my buyer guide and my seller guide. And guess how many people from that list actually used it and actually told, sent, sent it to me and said, oh, thanks so much. Like, this is my new buyer guide. A handful, maybe? One. One. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure other people have used it too, but like, what's it's, your... just not, it's just not realistic to think that, you know, everybody's going to use your stuff. So I think people can really give away their secrets and not be afraid that... I would, I would agree so much. What's your best tip for promotion? Like you mentioned stories, like what's your call to action? What's your typical promotion? What are you saying to yeah, kind of drive, question. drive the um, activity there? Yeah. So I always like to use create mode with a black background. I feel, I find that like, if it's more simple, it converts better. I used to have like a ton of sparkles and graphics and a picture of me, but I just had to get away from all of that because it just doesn't convert. Um, so it's always create mode. It's always a typically always a black background and then just as little language as possible with one link and the same white arrow every single time telling you to click here to grab it. So it'll just be like, grab my free buyer guide. Yeah. It makes or, so much sense because we've said it clear over cute, clear over yes. clever. Um, for sure. because it's just the human brain when it sees all the different right. imagery or the creative or the sparkles, you know, how you call it, yeah. like it just gets distracted and then doesn't know what it's supposed to do next, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I always try to do like social proof too. So for example, I wanted agents to join my referral list. Okay. So if you're in Texas, you know what I mean? I want you to join my list so that if I have a Texas buyer, I can send them to you. So I will, before I actually tell them to do what I want them to do, I will post a screenshot of somebody who has, a, that's in a different area, a different state. That's a buyer that's saying, Hey, I wish you were, I wish you were an agent in Florida. And I'm like, well, actually I have a great agent in Jacksonville. And then I'll do another like story post of showing her, showing everybody that she closed before I ask them to do whatever I want them to do. Uh, super that makes smart. Sense? Yeah. Super smart. Yep. Yeah. Showing that proof. They have, to know that there's, they have to know that there's value and them giving uh, their email over to you. Yep. So you have to just show that. And then two, what I'll do is I'll screen record. Um, so if I'm giving away my buyer guide or a freebie, I will screen record the actual buyer guide, like in Canva so they can see how cute it is. And then I will do another story and say, grab it here. Okay they know what they're getting into. I always try to, you have to like walk people through what they're, what they're getting. Agree. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's super smart. You're basically doing your own mini landing page, your own little ad mm -hmm. within Instagram and using the automation of mini chat to fulfill the delivery of the item of value and capture the email, which is fantastic. Now you've crushed it on social and content. Um, and you. you know, everybody's trying to do it now. I, I don't, yeah. I rarely meet agents anymore that don't agree that, oh, I need to be on social. I need to be doing video. I need to be doing content. But again, it's like we said, when it comes to, you know, how many people actually execute one out of 700, like you said, yeah. why is it that you think your content is resonating? Like, how do you think about your content in terms of okay. your, your posting and, and what you're going to share, what you're not going to share? Because you're, mm -hmm. you've cut through the noise and you've built a tribe and audience. And there are so many agents out there that are posting. They're just getting mm -hmm. no engagement or they're getting no tribe. Like, how do you think about your content? 
Yeah. So I started originally doing only funny and like silly content because I saw an avenue and a path and I saw that there were not a lot of female realtors that were being silly online. So that's what I thought like the rest of my social media career was going to be. But then I realized that I really wanted to make an impact in our industry. And, you know, the last year was like really tough for me personally. My mom was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's and I was Mm. really struggling. I didn't really know like who to go to for help. And so social media can really just be such a highlight reel. And so I was scrolling and scrolling and it's just like another just listed post or another just sold post. And so now I need to be the agent that I needed in that time when like everything looked perfect on the surface, but deep down I was hurting and struggling. And so I think I always try to relate it back to the impact all the content that I create is always related back to the impact that I want to make, which is to be that agent that like I really needed. And I think just the byproduct of posting that more authentic and vulnerable content, I've just created a tribe and a community that feel like they're a part of something and they feel like they can come to me, um, which is exactly what I want. Do you find yourself like just documenting throughout the day, like today, for instance, do you already know what you're kind of going to post or are you just kind of free flowing throughout the day, whatever you feel? And, and if that's the case, like one of my struggles has been is I just don't think about it. Like I'm literally, there's so many situations where it's just like, ah, I wish I would have you know, said something about that, but it's now five hours have passed. And, you know, I've, I've just in the, like I mentioned Shannon Gillette to you before we came yeah. on of like one of our favorite episodes And one of the things that she does, I don't know how she does it so well, she just literally documents her whole life throughout the day, or at least it seems that way. It's like, how do you keep yourself on track in like knowing what you're going to post today? So I, I do a lot in my stories, my Instagram stories. I mean, I think once a week, I'm always trying to figure out how to get more emails. So there's that. So I think maybe in that way, it's a little bit more planned, but for the most part, it's just kind of, I'm just kind of going with the flow. And I I try not to do more than like two story posts a day because I feel like people then just kind of tune out. And then I always let the story expire before I post it, post a new story, if that makes sense. So I'll do about two a day, but then I will not, I will let both of those expire after 24 hours before I post the next day. You find that boost your engagement? I do. Uh, Yeah. I've seen a similar effect on mine. It's like if you let it expire and breathe, which yeah. is actually contrary to what people used to teach is never let your story <laughs> expire. But I have found that when you let it expire, it actually, your next post gets way more views in the story. Yeah, uh, for sure. Which makes sense because Instagram's trying to keep you posting. Exactly. Uh, so then, okay, so you're going through, do you have a, a way, like a style that you, a way you approach what you want to talk about authentically or do you just literally it happened I go with the flow because what I'm looking for for myself is going like like this podcast happens so would you pull out your phone and go man just had the great opportunity to be on state paid you know this is just an example and you know xyz or do you just kind of just flow because I found myself doing that it's like I document what I just did and it's like well that's not really authentic people don't really care that much Yeah. So what I would probably do, like if I were going to promote this on my Instagram story, I would wait until we were all done. And then I would maybe take a quick little video story of us here. And then I would put it on my Instagram story. And I would say, you know, every time before I go on a podcast, I get really nervous, Mm. but have to do the scary things because that's when we grow. And then I would probably say something like, if we're not growing, you know, we're dying or something like that. I know it's a little woo woo, but um, (laughs) I would say like that because that's very, like very much my brand of like, we're going to do the scary things because that's when we grow as people. Um, So I always try to relate it back to, to the impact that you're trying to make impact. Yeah. Because I want other female realtors too, to be like, Oh wow, she's, she's scared, but she's doing it. And I can do it too. Like, it's so important to me to be like that leader. Yeah. Why is that important? Like, yeah, I know it's really important as you look at trying to help women have a voice in real estate yeah. or find their voice, um, you know, and For how sure. they should post. Why is that so important to you? And, and what are you, what's your message to, to the women out there when it comes to social? Yeah. I feel like for so long, I didn't have my own voice, you know? And so it just breaks my heart thinking that there are other women that 
you know, are in the same spot as me because it's so freeing and so awesome when you can just rise above the fear and just post what you want to post, be who you want to be. And so it's so important to me to really put that message out there. Was that from just the fear of like the judgment of what others would say or, Mm -hmm. you know, like you would lose, uh, whether it's clients or lose opportunity? I think it was just the fear of failure. I just have let fear hold me back for so long in terms of like, you know, I've only been really trying to grow on social media for the last year. Wow. And never wanted to speak. I was too afraid. I would see people on stage and be like, I admire their confidence, but I could just could never do that. Or I would hear people on podcasts and I'd be like, wow, that's so cool. Like I'm happy for them, but like I just could never do that, you know? And so it I just had to do it. Like it was so important to me to really rise above it. And I feel like it's like a muscle. The more you work it, the easier it becomes to show up. And so I've just seen such a transformation in my own self in terms of like how I've continued to show up and rise above that fear of failure. And so I want other female realtors to, to feel that as well, to just rise above that fear um, and continue to grow, even though it's scary. Hmm. Yeah. It's really powerful. Like the, the takeaway of when you can find the impact that you want to make, through your life and through your business, that really is the the genesis or the the motivation to push you through the adversity. Um, and I think so few people spend the necessary time really going like, who is the person I want to be? Most importantly, like the legacy, the impact I want to have to help that fuel their day to day. And I think it's because everybody talks about finding your why. Everybody talks about, you know, the setting the goals and stuff like that, which is important. You need that and your why can play in. But this idea of like, how are you giving back? Because I really think we're designed as human beings to get fulfillment, true fulfillment out of giving, true fulfillment out of out of almost like leaving an impact. And I see it in so many people's lives. I've shared the story before of um, Ed Milet, which I'm sure you uh, no, I've had my lap. Most people do in this space, yeah. you know, incredible motivational speaker. He gets called upon mm-hmm. by presidents and, and star athletes and star actors that are in a state of depression or they're down and yeah. he, they call on him to, Hey, help coach me, like help me. And the first thing he asked them is how are you giving back in your life? And he says it almost never fails that someone that he finds at a really high level that is down and out, they do not have an avenue in their life where they're doing what you're saying, which is they found a purpose, they found a piece of impact, they found a way they want to help other people, and they are leveraging everything they do in their life to to that cause. And that's one of the first things he does is he helps them pick the charity, the, the impact, the thing that he that they want to give back to in their life and helps implement that. And he says it changes your whole state. And I just think that's a, a piece that's maybe overlooked so much in business because it doesn't produce revenue. It's actually the For opposite. Sure. It's more, you know, giving. And But in the end, yeah. it does produce revenue. The ultimate effect is it produces, but, you know, it doesn't, it's not a tangible, I'm calling the lead, I'm getting an email address from Chat or something like that. It's more, right. you know, this is the impact I want to leave on the world. Yeah. And I think too, everything else becomes so much easier in your life when you do define that impact, like in terms of creating Instagram content, I I don't even have to think about it. Like you just asked me, what would you do for this? And I just instantly was like, this is what I would do because that's, that's me. And that's the impact that I want to make like in our industry. So I feel like once people can really define that everything else in their life just becomes so much easier because you're working towards that goal. Mm. So your content just becomes, okay, well, I'm working towards that goal. And you have a clear understanding and a clear vision of what you want to do. Yeah, it's so good. And I love Simon. I don't know if you follow Simon Sinek or not, but he he came out recently mm. with, and so his big talk was always, you know, start with the why, but his most recent work is all around this concept of the infinite game versus the finite game. And I was speaking yesterday to a group of insurance agents and was referencing, hey, what do you do when you feel like crap, right? How do you, how do you motivate yourself? And I referenced that concept of the finite game versus the infinite game. And it plays into our topic that we're talking about, which is if you don't realize you're in an infinite game, 
You're not in a finite game. A finite game is like football. There's a scoreboard. There's rules. There's a time period that you're playing in, and somebody wins and loses. But in life, it's an infinite game, meaning like the, the purpose is to just keep going. Like your today is different than somebody else's today. Stop comparing yourself. And, and when it comes to impact, if you play the infinite game, then mm -hmm. it really is powerful because it's like, hey, it's not about the revenue I make this year or the sales I make this year. It's about, hey, how do I help people advance in their life? How do I myself become the better version of myself? Because the goal of this game is it's a marathon. It's many, uh, a lot of little sprints that make up a marathon. And that whole perspective shift for me gave not only me peace, purpose, but it also allows me to, to compete in a way that's different. Now I'm not just constantly comparing myself to others or looking in the rear view. I'm actually being able to look towards the future because life is not about what you're doing. It's what, what I'm doing in my life, and it's an infinite game. Sure. Now, we For do sure. all have a timeline. I mean, we're all going to die eventually, I guess. Who knows but, you know, you what know? they'll come up with. We got, we got time AI's to coming. figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and I think that was so huge for me is just realizing, too, like the time we have on Earth is so short. Yeah. I don't want to spend it chasing another deal. I actually just don't care. Like mm. there was a time in my life where my volume, my transaction volume consumed me so much to where I was finding my self-worth in the amount of homes that I sold. Mm. And it's just not, it's just not the case anymore. I was so burnt out and, you know, I just feel like I just feel like I really want to leave a legacy. I really want to make an impact in this industry. That is what's important to me, not the amount of homes that I've, I've sold or will continue to sell. Yeah, I love that. I was just at dinner last night with um, some successful CEOs in the Philadelphia area. And we were talking about, I think what happens to people on their way up in success mm -hmm. is you get burned by people, you get betrayed um, bad yeah. things happen, right? It's a roller coaster. You've probably seen this. I mean, you, for a focus of not selling on a lot of homes and volume, <laughs> you sell a, a lot of homes and you do a lot of volume. 93 million is crazy. Um, but you get hardened on your way up because mm -hmm. you're trying to stay focused to your goal and drive your revenue and drive the company. And the people are betraying you and burning you. Everybody has their stories. And it is so hard to hang on to that you can build a successful company and also care and let people in. Mm -hmm. And it is so difficult because you watch all the successful people. What happens to them is they get success and they shut themselves. Like they've literally blockaded everybody. They don't care what people think so much so because they go, oh, I can't care what people think. Let me post on social. And then they take that to a level of I can't care what people think where I'm not going to care about them. And they're actually the, the, the empathy or the EQ. And I just think it's a challenge to all of us as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as people trying to be successful is can you hang on to the fact that you can be successful in this life? Maybe you won't be as successful as somebody that's just doesn't care at all about people because they're willing to lie, cheat, steal, do whatever. But that's not even the, the type of person you should want to be. But you can be successful and you can care about people. And I truly believe you can. I think it's harder. Really? I think maybe at the end of your life, maybe you're less 10 million bucks than the other person, but that 10 million bucks won't even compare to the joy you'll have of all the people that are around you. And this is why the stereotype of the rich man that has, or rich woman that has no friends, no family, they're miserable when they get up there because they've literally on their way up and burned so many times that they shut people off and you can't do that. Sure. I totally agree. I think also we have to think in years versus deals or months. I think for a long time too, I was like, okay, let me just hit X amount of volume this year. And then I would work, 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 work to get to that goal. And it's like, I had it all wrong. I think we have to think long-term. We have to think in years. Agree. Like what I'm doing will probably, I probably won't see the true success in my mind for another five years. But I think it, it changes and it allows you to really sustain when you think in years versus months or yeah, days. Well said. Lindsay, uh, tell everyone about the upcoming party that you're yeah. that you've got going on. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So we are throwing an event called Realtor Prom, uh, <laughs> January 25th in DC from 6 to 10. It's free. It'll be open bar, um, a DJ. It's gonna be really fun. Dan O'Neill is coming. I wanted Eric to come, but he can't come, unfortunately. But it's gonna be a really great time. I feel like 
2023 was such a hard year for a lot of agents and a lot of my friends. And so I just feel like the morale is down a little bit. I feel like some agents are sad or depressed. And so I just want to start the year off right and just have everybody come and just have like a really good fun time. Now, do they have to That's dress awesome. in prom gear? Is that the idea? They do. Okay. Yes. Right. Yep. So and then the we will crown the uh, <laughs> male and female, whoever is most extra dressed we will crown male and female realtor prom king and queen. You should make everybody like bring their actual prom picture <laughs> and like wear <laughs> it, like have, like have to wear it as like their name tag or something like that. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, I so, love that. So people can see, I mean, I think of my prom That's picture. Awesome. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So we just posted the promo yesterday and we have like a hundred and I think 52 agents who have already signed up to come. Incredible. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Lindsay, thanks so much for coming on. Before we close out, let people know how they can connect with you and follow your journey. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram. I'm Lindsay Joe, L-I-N-D-S-E, triple Y underscore Joe. The best way to find me. <laughs> it's a lot of competition yeah. for Lindsay Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. And I wanted to change it too, but I'd already gotten verified. And so if you cha- if you go back and try to change it, you have to go back through the re- re-verification process. And so uh, it's just, you know, it's... Go. It's well, fine. We'll have it. It's good. Many whys in there. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you all for listening. You can get uh, the links that Lindsay mentioned there over at statepaypodcast.com where we'll post the show notes. That'll all be in one area. You can also get the video of this episode and find out how to subscribe to Stay Paid over at statepaidpodcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode and want to show your support, hop on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review along with a comment. We'll read it here on the show. And the best way to support the show is to simply share this episode with somebody that you know. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remind media.com and of course you can follow us on instagram we are at stay paid podcast for this episode of stay paid i'm joshua stike guys i'm luke acreen Lindsay. thank you so much incredible everybody go follow her on social check out her articles on bam it is incredible content and just a great example of what you can do on social um, and we all know we got to be on social so it's great to follow people so you can model you don't have to reinvent the wheel you just got to go and look at what success is and success leaves clues so my action item for you is Lindsay said it best you don't own your following on social right instagram owns that or linkedin or facebook whatever the social platform is but you own your email list so you need to get those followers into an email list and Lindsay literally just told you how to do it so go implement mini chat and test that this year and do something simple like your buyer's guide or your seller's guide like Lindsay shared and test that out let us know how it goes remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every business is top producers take action take action on that today 